Okay, thanks, Chris. Um, what I'd like to do with videos this year is continue what we've been doing so far, uh, document the, the urban gardening project with Randy and with Chris and with Sean and with whoever we can, whoever else we can pull in, um, because that will give us a nice um, record of what we're doing over the season mm -hmm. to include in our Occupy video channel. Mm -hmm. And we'll also be sharing our videos with the Op Urban Farming Project. So we'll have some exposure there too. Mm -hmm. um, to start off, I would like to ask Randy to share the story that he was just talking about with us about when he first came to Youngstown. Thank you. Oh, I'd be glad to. I came to Youngstown in 1981 to run a uh, shelter for runaway and homeless children <coughs> and um, on Indiana Avenue. And up the street from there was an empty city lot, which I was able to um, gain access to to create a community garden. I um, mowed it down with a lawnmower and I marked off the plots and went around the neighborhood and said anybody who wants to come till and create a garden, they're welcome to do that. Uh, went to the neighborhood and nobody wanted it, so I tilled it all and marked it off. And went door to door and said anybody want to come garden now? And they said no. Did the same thing with getting plants and they said no. And then I planted the plants and they said no. And then I harvested the food and went door to door to offer it pe to people and they all said no. So um, I think that the idea of community garden has to be more than just uh, just that process to be successful. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what it takes, but what I do know is that the people who do get invested in community gardening like we do here, um, about half of them end up maintaining their garden spots to the point where they can harvest and the other half just give up. So it is not as simple as we just want to have a community garden. Mm -hmm. It has to take some promotion. Even giving away free food sounds like oh, yeah. it's more complex than one would first think. It is. I remember uh, about two years ago, one of the neighbors walked through the garden on the way to the, um, I call it the food desert store down the street. Um, and I offered him some tomatoes and a few other things and he said, no, thank you. And when he came back, he came through the garden again, and I saw in his shopping bag, because it was a clear bag, a couple of cans of tomatoes. So, <laughs> there's an outreach issue. There um, is. What, what are, what are your thoughts, and Chris and Sean, you too, what are your thoughts on outreach? Uh, my, one of my thoughts is that it's very difficult. Um, what we have done is, um, over the years, tried to build up uh, the number of gardeners who come back year after year and then uh, have it be people who walk by the garden and ask <coughs> about the garden and um, offer them plots. You know, uh, I, if I had the answer to out, what the outreach was, I'd be more successful than I am. So maybe that's a question for someone who's been successful because it hasn't been there. Well, now, where are the points of success? Because there, there certainly are some points of success. The success has been those people who come back year after year and garden their own plots. That's, okay. that's what works. And I, I think if we build up that base, that that will be successful. Also, I've had much more success giving food away from this garden than I had others. Okay. And I don't know whether you call it success or not, but there are a good number of neighbors who walk through the garden and steal stuff. Well, that's so success. That's, cause it depends on your perspective. Well, they're getting fresh fruit. They food. are, but they're also, you're encouraging people to do things that are bad karma, and I don't oh, like right. that. Right. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I guess you could call that success. Now, Sean, I understand that you're um, in charge of the garden this year. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say in charge. I'm sort of like a facilitator. A facilitator. What's going on? <coughs> okay, so Excuse me. what's what's your take then on this, you know, on this issue of outreach and getting people to, you know, not only come in and garden but actually eat the food? Well, I think a lot of it goes back to education. 
Um, they just aren't teaching people this kind of thing at, at, in the schools. They're not teaching at home economics anymore in the schools. Um, people are under the impression that it takes a long time to, and it's hard work to even cook the food if it, you're picking it raw and, and going from raw to, you know, something on the table for dinner. Um, I think that's the biggest problem. Our emphasis now in all the schools is just STEM. That's all you hear is STEM and nothing else. And there's so much, so many other things that are, you know, needed to be taught. I know when I went to school that home economics was required for the girls and shop classes for the boys, you know. Mm -hmm. Now that, you know, it was changed, but then it almost completely disappeared. There's no emphasis on it whatsoever. And so, <coughs> do you think it would be beneficial to do things like the food not bombs picnics that we've oh, done yes. in the past? Yes, I think that's that be... that's good. But a lot of that stuff we gave them already, you know, food that was already cooked and prepared. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which some of the people <laughs> required that because they had no place to cook. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's that's a big problem too. Is you know, do they have a place to cook? Do they have something? Do they have utilities even? Do they have a stove, you know? Right. Do they have access to something? Right. You know? Uh, food food instead of bombs is a great program. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. You know, and it helps a lot of people that are, you know, down and destitute and don't have anything at all. Well, maybe we can explore that later on this summer, mm -hmm. too. It sounds yes. like the time has come again. Mm-hmm. Yes. I agree. Now, Chris, yeah. how does um, how does fresh food impact vegetarian diets that you can think of right offhand? Oh, it a hundred percent it impacts it. You know, we hear some of the most scholarly and experienced uh, names out there now promoting plant-based diets, and it's all found here in the garden. You know. Um, I agree with what Sean is saying about how education is key to help people understand um, the, the value of nutrition. We've lost that. You know, we've stopped becoming smart consumers about what's good for us to eat. Um, I've heard so many uh, political commentary uh, folks say, we've learned to vote against our own best interests. And what could be better for us than this good, wholesome food coming right out of the garden? Right. What right. could be better? You know, a vegetarian diet where you don't have to worry about chemicals and pesticides, organic herbs and berries and um, fruit that comes from trees as well as tomatoes and peppers. I mean, we, we have it all here at Fairgreen, and I think all of us as gardeners have a... Um, a keen and sincere appreciation of what wholesome food is all about uh, but the rest of the public they're sold on the idea that you know the big box um, fast food stores are nutritious that they're giving us everything that we need in our, our diets yet we see diabetes we see cancer running rampant out there in the world we see all of our you know our, our health issues just escalating now and where could it be coming from? You know, we all know that the historians, the guys that were the great thinkers in life, say we are what we eat. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Ben Franklin, famous last words we don't dig our graves with shovels, but with our forks. Right. right. And I, you know, I firmly believe in that. So maybe we could use the Food Not Bombs platform as an as a platform to promote vegetarian diets. Too. I would love to see that. As a matter of fact, when you guys were talking about this right now, what was going through my own mind was um, during the summer here at Fairgreen, we usually have a couple of get-togethers and it might be good to pass out flyers or put a couple of signs up asking the neighbors to, to come. Uh, you know, just a big invite saying, hey, you know, come over to the garden, see what it's like, you know, get your hands dirty, you might like it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so they, that it's just just an idea that uh, is very much in the rough stages, but it might work. Yes, excellent. Let's plan on let's plan on pursuing that because it sounds like the time has come. Yeah, we had a dinner here once that was primarily <clears throat> fried green tomatoes, um, 
and uh, the smell of it brought the neighborhood in. <laughs> you know? Okay, yeah, well, yeah. we'll smell do that it. again. So fried green tomatoes. We know it works. And with Chris was talking about Ben Franklin, I went all the way back to Hippocrates, who said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Yes. Right, so absolutely. And, and he was right on because the standard American diet, you know, abbreviation is sad, and mm -hmm. that's exactly what yeah. the standard American Boo -hoo. diet is. Boo-hoo, yeah. Um, We're getting uh, the sick the daily. Nu nutritional expect uh, expectation for a, a healthy diet is to have seven or eight <coughs> fruits and vegetables a day and the average number that Americans get is 1.6 and that includes potatoes french fries <laughs> exactly french fries <laughs> potato and, chips and, and tomatoes the ketchup to get your french yep. fries in yep. and that for lots of people are the vegetables that yeah. they get fruits and vegetables tomatoes are fruits for the day um, and rather than do that, I would prefer to see people doing a whole food plant-based diet. Right. It's a type of vegetarianism, a type of veganism uh, that uh, eliminates all the negative things that some vegetarians do eat, like processed foods. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, um, uh, you know, potato chips are, um, are, are vegan. Yeah. <laughs> so <Yeah>. it's not <laughs> French but fries. So is beer, and you beer, know. Beer, and and beer, is, <laughs> beer and wine are vegan. That's whole right. brain. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, guys, we have hit our limit for this video. We will get together in two weeks and track the progress of the garden. Peace. Thank you.